How you doing folks? Something a bit different today, completely different. Um, I'm here in Derry you can see the, the Sleeve Mish Mountains there in the background. There my two. Um, this is the old mill in Derry Moor. At one time this mill would belong to Macowns in Trulli. Macowns were big industrialists. And they used it for grinding corn and barley and oats and whatnot and everything else along those lines. Um, from the best my knowledge and the best way I can figure out, I asked a few local people about it. Um, McCowns closed it in and around the time of the famine, around the 1850s, there, thereabouts. Um, it took up a massive space. Um, it took up all this field. This is all that's left of it. There's, there's, there's talks that it was, it was used as, um, when it was knocked in the 1960s, it, the rest of the, the rubble off the place was used for uh, coastal erosion projects in Marihees, which is about another 10 or 15 miles back towards West Kerry, Castle Gregory, if you ever know where that place is. Um, in 1880s, it was recommissioned by a fellow by the name of Mr. O'Connell. And Mr. O'Connell was a manager of the Blarney Woolen Mills in Cork. And he came here and he rented this building um, for 99 year lease. And he put 60 tons of machinery into the mill to get it back up and working and to get it into working condition. We'll turn on the camera and we look at it. I don't know if you can see it or not now, but on the gable end, it's all cladded with slate. And if we look around the field here, you can see the different walls and the lovely gates. And there's a wall here, so you can imagine this might have been a gable wall. I have a photograph of the mill um, in its working state, so hopefully I'll be able to find that and put it on the video. Hopefully it's up there now. Um, but in 1890, about the 1880s, this Mr. O'Connell leased it and he, um, he leased it for 99 years. And if we walk over here, you can see where the, the, the wheel is. It was a water driven mill. And um, he leased it for 99 years, but of course, industry happens. And he had it set up as a woolen mill. But the woolen mill um, eventually. I suppose with the boom of cotton in America, the, the sheep's wool started to decline probably, not too sure what year, but they then reused it as a flax mill. And they, they were turning flax, and for those of you who don't know what flax is, flax is a naturally grown product that you can actually turn into fibres for making wool and or for making wool, for making clothing and all this kind of stuff. Um, I think there's a byproduct of it, is it called hemp? I'm not exactly too sure, and they use hemp for making ropes. Um, like I said, the mill then, um, along with the mill in Derry Moor that time, there was a great house, which was down below the main road. This here, where my car was parked, was the old main Tralee Dingle Road at one time. And just to give you an example, the mill was such an industry uh, for Derrymore at that time in the 1880s. The Tralee Dingle uh, railway line passed just slightly down below here. We better see it there soon. Um, they actually built a station. They actually built a platform and a station to take the wool and take the, the products out of the mill um, down for the station. Now, the mill did close at some stage. And my grandfather's aunt, which my grandfather died in 1989, Thomas O'Flaherty, and his aunts worked here in the mill. Two of his aunties worked here in the mill. And when the mill closed, a lot of the mill was pulled down. And they took a lot of the grinding wheels or the wheels or the cogs or whatever was in the mill at the time. They took them out of the mill and they were actually transported to the mill in Foxford. Um, am I right in St. Foxford as a Mayo? Um, and they believe it, the story has it that they were actually taken from here and carried out to Phoenix and transported up to Foxford in, in a ship. 
So that is the story. I have relations in Foxford. If they're watching this there, I think believe their names are Coleman's. Unfortunately, we don't really have that much contact with them. But um, yeah, they're Coleman's. Now, another interesting fact about this mill. And I believe there was an industry here going back even before the mill. Um, I'm not exactly too sure where it is. Um, there is a strong possibility this could be it. Um, I'm not too sure is that it or not. No, it, it looks kind of out of place. But there is, or this is, this could be it. This is it, look. I bet you this is it. It's actually um, Flint. I think that's it. And it's actually, um, it's not naturally occurring in, in this area. Definitely not naturally occurring in this area. And it's built into the walls. It's actually, you can see a capping on the wall. And the Flint, um, I was told by a friend of mine, that it was actually used as ballast in ships that would have been coming in and apparently there is a good bit of flint around here and a geologist said that there is no naturally occurring flint in the area and that like that it would have been used as as ballast another interesting fact i discovered yesterday that's where we're going we're actually going to go way 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 in there in the valley of the mountain um a friend of mine dennis butler told me Actually, Dennis Butler told me about the flint as well, so if he's wrong, you can blame him. Thanks, Dennis. But in there, in that valley, way in here around the side, apparently this is Derrymore East and this is Derrymore West Mountain. There's a river running down the middle here that drove the mill. And apparently there's two different rocks, two different types of stones. In, so I was told there must be a fault line running up the, the valley of the mountain. And that valley was created naturally thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago by what they think was an ice glacier. And the ice glacier melted and came down the mountain depositing all these stones you see here and the stones that built the mill and so on all the way down out onto Derrymore Strand. Now, another interesting fact, I don't know how true this is or how false it is. Um, in camp in West Kerry, which is about three miles back the road, there is another mill. And that's beside the point, that's not the point I'm coming to, but there is a quarry in camp, a slate quarry. And um, I'd love to be able to find out, if there's any geologist going to watch this or someone, um, the slate in this quarry, now there's two big slate quarries in Kerry now, there's one of them in Valencia Slate, below on Valencia Island, and um, there's one in camp. Now the one in camp was never used for... A massive length of time it was only ever kind of used locally and for local projects and local i suppose industry or local whatever and um but it's there it's in camp and they reckon the first house in kerry to get a slate roof was in camp as well which is about 10 miles west of tree um when they did knock the mill in the 1960s like i said it was drawn back to the marihees as a coastal erosion project and um when they knocked it, they reckon what they used to build it, it was so hard, they couldn't knock this tower. They tried to knock this tower, apparently, and they couldn't knock it because they've said when they built it, it was built out of, obviously, stone and lime. And what they mixed through it was sand shells, which would be a kind of a coral, the shells from the beach. And they mixed pig, not pigs, bull's blood with it to make the, the lime and make the cement harder that was their theory and if you look at the mill you can actually you can actually see there you can see the different floors now like i said it was first of all used as a a grinding mill for grinding corn and oats and cereals and all that and then this mr o'connell a scottish man he converted it into um a woolen mill and then it became a flax mill of course like that it was massive employment actually one more thing I look at before we we get underway, you might like to see um, what I call it. I don't know what to call it, but it's the place where they would where the the mill wheel or the the water wheel would have would have stood. Um, so the water wheel, you can see it. You can see it there. There's a wall, and there's a wall here. And so that was the size of the water wheel. And I presume they bought the water down here. I have it in a couple of photographs. And um, yeah, so you can use your imagination really. Um, 
And like I said, that was the old Dingle Road. At one time, there was a bridge crossing there, which is there no more. And it goes all the way back along, way out, back through several farms and back along camp. Some of the old Dingle Road is still in use today as kind of by roads and whatnot behind their own camp. So that's it, just to get on the way, we're going to go up there because above and top of Dermore Mountain, in at the back, there's three lakes. And the three lakes, two out of the three lakes were dammed to supply water to the mill. Um, okay, let's get on the way and we'll see when we get going. How you doing folks? We're at the first, I suppose we call it the first waypoint um, in our trek to Derrymore Lake. Um, if I can see it now, let me see it in the reflection. The mill is around there. That's the mill, right? I think that's the mill. And we swing around again. And you can see the view, if I can get my finger to it, that's the mill, right there, right in front of that green field there. Um, we zoom in on it, you can see the gable end of it, just there, look, that's the mill, right? And then at one time, from the mill, you can follow the ditch down along there, the centre of the camera, all the way down, out, back along this ditch, and out there, that's what we call Derrymore Island. Now, one time Derrymore Island was owned by the McCowns family in Tralee. And um, apparently they just grow a lot of flax there. And that's why the mill was associated with the McCowns. But since I made the first bit of a video below there in the mill, um, I was speaking to my brother, Dennis O'Flaherty, who's living in Cork. Um, and Dennis was reading, doing a bit of research for me in a book. And he said it was actually, they think, they're not too sure, but roughly very early 1800s, 1803, 1804, the mill was originally, they think, opened by a family of Donovans. They were from Cork. And they had the mill there for a long time and they ran it as a grain mill for crushing grain. But McCowns took advantage of the situation and they grew grain and oats and barley outside there on what is now that strip of land along there it's known as Derrymore Island and then they grew flax there in later years and the flax was in, used in the mill now if I can do this again which you probably can see a very faint track there back along here a ditch there in the middle that was actually the old Dingle railway line which ran Dingle to the left and three to the right and just below, kind of, if I can get it again now, there, there was actually a train station built, a specially built train station. If I can zoom in, you actually might be able to see the, the remains of it. It's just there, in the very centre of the screen, the remains of the platform. And that platform was built especially for the mill um, to take the, the corn, the oats and the barley and everything from the mill there in the centre of the screen down to the kind of the top left to where the, the platform was. So at that point in the 1880s, it was obviously a thriving, thriving industry. And of course, out there behind, you can't really see, you have the Marihees and the Seven Hogs, um, Fiennet Lighthouse, and this is Fiennet Pier. Um, Fiennet Pier at the moment, there's a ship in there and they export Libra container, ship to shore container cranes all over the world out of Fiennet Pier. And, Further, further out again is uh, Kerry Head, and way out beyond in the horizon is Loop Head, which is in County Clare. So that's kind of it. Um, oh yeah, there's another, I suppose, an interesting fact. Um, the Dingle Walkway it runs along here, all the way back along, and below here, inside in the river, down here, there's actually a reservoir, which in the 60s, 50s, 60s and 70s, uh, right probably up until the 80s, would have supplied water to Derrymore and Corrigine and Long because when the water was coming from Killarney, um, there was an issue if any of you would be aware of Corrigine Church. I suppose they didn't have the pumping facilities and the pumping capabilities, but they couldn't get the water up across the top of Corrigine Heights. So they put in right, right down there, inside in the river, they put in a, a reservoir or a pumping station. For, for the water. So that's it. Look, we'll trek on. Um, there's a good bit of Republican history involved here in the mountain as well. There was a, a man by the name of Michael Flynn. 
he was shot shot just up here I'll show you where he was shot and he was actually laid out below there in a house very close to the mill so we'll trek on and um, that'll be our next waypoint all right I hope you're enjoying this as much as as much as we are all right thank you how are you doing guys this is the the nearly stone as we call it um a fellow from Belly McKe I think he was from Belly McElliot he was shot over there on that side of the hill by the Free State soldiers or the the pro treaty they were for the treaty the 26 counties and this fellow Michael Flynn was against the treaty and uh, he was shot here and he was taken he was laid shot over there sorry he was laid out in this stone which we call the Neely stone and he was taken down the mountain and laid out in a house below very very close to where the mill was when we started out about it was about an hour and a half ago now at this stage and um he was buried in rag graveyard and truly he had to be buried at night because um i suppose of repercussions or whatever so that's kind of it have anything else i suppose that's kind of it that is the the valley that's the the lake is a way way inside there um this is another river coming down here it says on one of the books there's two books i read one of them was um Princess, princesses of Tralee was about the big major landlords and the big um, industrialists in Tralee and the other one was Bruneville, a gateway to the west I think it was called um, unfortunately they're both out of print but both books uh, mention the mill and they mention all the, the carry-ons and everything else that went up here um, there's Okay. It's a complete checkered history of the mill, like I said. It was Donovan's, um, it was Latchford's, it was McCown's. No one really seems to know who built it and what happened at the finish. But look, we're getting there. Um, I'll show you the, the, the works McCown's did to the lakes to improve the flow of water. Now, there is a story as well that McCown's diverted a river to increase the flow of water to the mill and I believe that could very well be the river they diverted um, off the side of the mountain with drains and canals to increase the flow of water to the mill but yeah look we'll stay going we're just heading up this is the, the best view or the view is getting narrow you can see a way out there if you look right there that's actually Belly Bunyan Phoenix the spa, church hill all along there and that is as you can see a Derrymore Island. Alright, we'll um, check back in with you again there in a few more minutes. I hope you're enjoying this adventure today. Thank you. How are you doing folks? We're getting there. This is the valley. So it's in front of us. We're all the way into right around there. But here's what we've travelled. If I turn this around, and if you look down there, if you can see it, that's what we would always have known as the old sheep pins. But here inside, right there, there's what I would have thought at one stage would have been the likes of beehive huts and stuff like that. Um, there's possibly about five of them there. Um, if there's any archaeologists watching this again, I'd love if they could come up and look and get their opinion on it. They're round, kind of rounded buildings, kind of in a figure eight shape. I hope you can hear me now, it's getting kind of windy up here. Um, rounded buildings in a figure eight shape. And I was always told it was just, just a sheep pin. And that's Derrymore River, going down along the valley. Now, apparently, um, McCowns or Latchfords, Latchfords when they owned the mill, or when they were in charge of the mill, it was them that done the, the, the works here to the lake, which is up ahead of us. So that's kind of it, we're getting there. It's 2 o'clock in the day, I think it's the 15th or 16th of May 2022. So yeah, I hope you're enjoying it, we're enjoying it, it's a bit of a struggle. My small lady's up there ahead of me, so there's only five, so she can do it, you can do it. Alright, give a look. Um, I should tell you like and subscribe. We're getting there. The video's probably running out. I'm probably two hours away from, well, an hour away from the lake, but we're getting there. All right. Give a like, give a subscribe, and um, we're nearly at the, the first or the bottom lake. How you doing, folks? This is the, the first lake. Um, 
it's a relatively small lake very shallow but if you look here along there there was a ditch built it's a big long bank ditch where my finger gone all the way along here um, to bank up the water now the story has it that someone from the mill would come up every morning and open the sluice gates which I imagine was there to leave go of the water now they reckon if in the middle of the day um, they might have to come back up to close it or if the mill was down or come up in the evening to close it they could make anything up to three trips a day now there is another wall built here I don't know if you can see it or not and just go around it and this wall it's a smaller wall it's just built kind of along there look um, it was built for the water out of the top lake it comes down there and siding the stones and I suppose there was such a gush of water when they'd opened the sluice gates in the morning that um, they had to build this wall to divert the water into the river and these were all all these mechanizations or I suppose to make the mill run more productively were done by what we think was done by Latchford's which was a big milling family in Tralee um, sometime, I don't know, maybe the, 18, the 1860s, something like that, the 1830s. It was, like I think it was, like I think I said earlier on, it was opened in the very early 1800s, 1803, 18, something like that. And it had several different owners throughout the year, um, throughout his years of running. I suppose really what closed the mill was probably, um, I suppose, the introduction of steam power. I suppose the steam train put it going into a production of um, wool and flax and whatnot, but ultimately the steam train and the steam engine was its own fault. Let's head up the hill into the third lake. All right. Okay, guys, we made it. We're inside in the middle lake in Derrymore. Now, you can see here, look, where the walls are built all along. So you can imagine the amount of water if you took a level from the top of that wall all the way around the cliff. Like that would be an enormous amount of water every morning to drive the mill wheel below. So thanks to everyone who was with me. We're not finished yet. There's a third lake up over there. So we're going to go up there. Thanks for everyone who stayed with me as far as this. And um, actually we'll give a, a quick walk over here. Hang on. Okay guys, this is the wall. Like, if you use your imagination, this is the height of the lake. Like there was a desperate height in the water. That's the valley. We walked all the way up along there. Third lake is just there. And this is the wall. Come on. This is my 12 year old, he came with us. I have a five year old there too. I'm kind of half winded, it's a fairly steep climb, but from the best of my knowledge, there was a sluice gate here on the third lake. Now, to, what I can know, what I can find out, my brother Dennis O'Flaherty and a couple of more that we asked, um, they said it was Latchfords in Tralee they were a big agent, a big I suppose Princess of Tralee is the book it talks all about him or Brunneville a gateway to the west so there was a sluice gate here and there was some for the job every morning to come up here to open the sluice gate actually do you know what if you zoom in I can barely see it see that that's actually Bannerstrand and you go way out around the corner of Belly Hike. That is actually Bannerstrand, and right in the middle of the screen there, you can see it. It's actually the Black Rock. If any of you know the Black Rock and Banner. That's some view from here, guys. All right, let's make it our way. We're going to make our way up to the, the third lake, which is right around there. How are you doing, folks? That is kind of it. This is lake number three in the um, Derrymore Lake Saga. So that's the middle lake. That's the upper lake, and that is it, into the mountains as we go. And you can see over here where Latchford's again built a stone wall to dam up the lake to 
increase the water flow during the day. So you know, it was something. But like I said, is the train, the train took the the wool and took the everything, the produce from the mill away. But in I suppose in another way, the train actually helped close down the mill. The steam engine was the end of the water wheel. So that's kind of it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. We have to go back down the mountain now. I don't know how long the video is. It could be 10 or 15 minutes. But um, that's kind of it. That's lake number three. That's lake number two. And lake number one is below. If you ever want to come up here. That's Bartry Ground up there. And Castle Main inches across the way. Alright guys. Give a like. Give a subscribe. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed something a bit different from the machinery videos. Period. Well, great.